I'm so disappointed in myself a lot of times when it comes to the news cycle and the information that's out there. Relevant news in the world. I have no clue about a lot of things that are going on, unfortunately. I don't stay on top of it. I remember growing up, there was only a couple slots when you would get information about the world. It would be around the 6 o'clock news, I would say, and then 11 o'clock news. I think it was something like that. Or 10 o'clock news before the night shows began. That was basically the only time you heard of news as far as uh, when you were an adult. But now it's a 24 hours nonstop action of news feed that I feel at some point is, you know, when you have too much of something, it has a law. It's called the law of diminishing returns. When you have too much of something, then it has a negative effect in anything you do. Look at it as when you have a dozen donuts. The first donut is going to taste great, but by the 12th one, you're going to be feeling sick. You're going to be, it's a law of diminishing returns where that first donut, the feeling of the first one, eating it and tasting it is going to be much better than the 12th one. Too much is always not a good thing. And I think with the news is gotten to a point where I've realized that a long time ago, I would say a few years ago, where it's not worth dabbling in and being around it all the time it's good to check in to see what the world is doing but then as i check out i don't need to read details i don't need to get into it or go down that rabbit hole of whatever it is that's going on in the world and i think for many people it there will be so much better if they did the same thing because what happens with a lot of us it seems especially in american society is that we're wired to take on these news we already have a negative mind state right we're going to work we're complaining about traffic complaining about co-workers co-workers complaining about our jobs complaining about life so the news i believe tends to pander to the fear and paranoia and anger that americans have and they package it in a way where it's going to be biased towards a certain crowd or towards certain demographics so for example if you're looking at somewhere like fox news it's gonna the news cycle is gonna resonate and it's gonna cater to the people that have those similar ideologies right and vice versa so i mean i look at it from the outside that's the way i see it and when i see these headlines i tend to step back and not have any bias with it i try not to not saying that it doesn't happen from time to time but i realized and it happened to me the moment hit me when i went on a cruise believe it or not when i went on a cruise for a few days and i did not hear anything about what the world was going on here with donald trump and politics i said you know what why am i even trying to learn or, or, or be acclimated with all these things because at the end life is beautiful there's a lot of things going on that are so irrelevant the way i look at it is hey as long as there's no war as long as the stores and the world around me is functioning as normal taxes go up and down i believe some years i pay more taxes some years i pay less taxes some you have new rules implemented and you have old rules changed so it it's a constant evolution in life in my opinion of, of things that are happening around us and i don't understand that i was talking to somebody a little bit about this about how impactful government is and it, it, it should be something that i monitor and, and and i don't disagree because in other parts of the world the people do have a say in how government does and does business i mean you saw you see the recent revolutions that you see over in syria and over in venezuela where they're just not happy with the government and people are out there wrecking havoc wanting change and i think that's something that i saw that in a documentary as well where i want to say it was either france or it was one of those countries out in europe where there was some law change where they added a few cents of taxes to the gas and people took off from work they started marching up and down the streets and then the government had to renege on that uh, <laughs> that law that they were trying to pass it was really funny so i understand from me out there in youtube world and looking at things that the the power of people in other countries when it comes to politics is more influential than it is here in the united states i don't i always said this plenty of times the elite control this country and politics is divide and conquer tactic 
it is something that is very evident to scholars and people that have studied the landscape here of politics and how it affects the people and how it is implemented it is very evident that that world is is what it is it's, it's not so when you sit there and you realize it and and you feel as if okay this doesn't change or impact the way i live my life sure taxes may go up and down sure some new laws may be implemented right and i think people are always concerned with the fear of let's just say some sort of a world war three happening that if we are ignorant to if we're ignorant to the possibilities of of men taking over and having power then we're ignoring history and we need to be on top of it by being involved in voting and all that stuff and i guess the way i look at it in this landscape is no different than how i look at sports and how people throw in social issues like there's no need at this stage there's no need for athletes to have a social stance during the game there's no need for that because they have a platform outside of playing basketball in their own social media page outside of the game where they can talk openly about whatever it is that they're fighting for and this is a, a very different time because back in those times in the 60s civil rights movements there w wasn't any opportunity for people of color to take a stance in a public forum there wasn't any of that so it was sports you had political rallies things like that so now in this day and age in 2019 you don't need any of that you don't need to go ahead and make a statement at a football game you can do that on your own social media page you can let it be known you can create your own youtube channel and have people come on board that is not related with the sport you can say hey this is my sport and i'm talking about social issues and politics right and you can have it be totally separate than what you are as a player right and so i think that, that that's where things have changed the same thing with politics i just feel that at the end there, there's just not for one force that is thinking about one agenda there's another force that is just as equal pushing back so you're always going to have this gridlock of sorts going on within the political landscape right now is the donald trump run before that it was the barack obama run now we're going to see if it's going to continue to be donald trump or it's going to be somebody else who knows but it, it just kind of goes it back it always flips it always changes so that's where i when i'm able to sit back and look at it and realize okay this is all changes this is nothing that it's no different in your job your bosses change dynamics change in, in your workplace with rules more stuff being implemented stuff being taken out insurance is changing you know all these different things that we experience on a year to year basis at work and in life is no different in the government and i think that if people were to look at it and understand that all of these news that we see out there is not something that should be impacting your life this this is stuff that may have been going on for many years you know when i see these stories of of men molesting and all these crazy stories of children being molested assaulted and all these things that that are just coming out a dime a dozen right in the news cycle i just look at it I, that's probably that stuff that's been going on for a long time we're just getting exposed to it now because of technology because of the ability of people to record and be able to provide content much easier right now if i want to become a writer and want to be a, a news reporter i don't need any certifications i don't need to go to school i just need to go out there get some headlines and go ahead and report for myself right and, and build some connections i mean that's really the way it is you don't need any school to learn how to do anything now and I feel that in this big landscape that we're living in where there's constant news, constant negativity, constant complaining, it is you, you have to be careful about how you consume it because it does impact how you live. It does impact how you, how you think. And I try to isolate myself as much as possible. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Like I said, I enjoy being with company and friends, but I think when it gets to those points where it's adversarial or they're trying to talk about politics or they're trying to talk about religion and, and trying to feel as if their way is the best way, that's where I respectfully tap out 
let you do your thing. And it's not saying that I wouldn't talk to anybody that I disagree with. But what happens is when you talk to somebody, they'll get truly offended. If they're not open minded, if I talk to somebody that's Christian and I'll talk to them openly about my views on it, they may that, that differs from theirs. They, they're going to get offended. Very rarely do you have somebody that you can conflict with in viewpoints and still get along very hard for people to do that people it's like if you're with me if you're not with me you're against me and that's an unfortunate mindset but and, and that's where i try to view it as well we're all different we all think differently we, we all have different walks of life we've all had different experiences so who am i to say to this person that their way is not the best way as long as it's not intruding in my space intruding in, in my world or you're not trying to have me convert into what you're thinking and you but you being respectful of my space i'm, I'm all in i i definitely have no problem getting along talking to you and and, and i'm totally fine with that. that that just makes me feel good all right and overall i feel that none of us really understand the bigger picture when you talk to people they don't you can tell that they don't get the bigger picture which is just enjoying life Enjoy the journey right now as is and make the best of it and just be lucky that we're alive doing our thing. And I always keep repeating that because you have to remind yourself with the headlines that come in, the news and all this shit that people complain about. It's like, really? I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you, you're here and living life and enjoying it. And if you're waiting for the nuclear bombs to come in, then, I mean, that's a sad way to live. You know, if, you, if you're waiting for the next catastrophe to happen then you're just you just might as well go to sleep and hibernate like a bear right for years until it happens because that's how people get man people just are worrying about the next big thing worrying about the next big hurricane you know when i get to people and i tell them i'm from florida wow they get so afraid because of the hurricanes and they feel like it's like the three little pig story where they just think you live in a straw house and it's going to be blown away it's really weird because they don't understand it. Like they all of a sudden you're gonna be twisting like the Wizard of Oz out there in a tornado and shit. It's not like that. But the news and and people will make you think that way that are not from here, right? And it's a it's a weird thing to battle the perception of people and their views. So I, I'm very careful about who I engage with on that topic. Like if you're if you're very adamant about how you feel and but yet you you can't respect or you have to feel like you debate me for for no reason then i have to check out and the news unfortunately provides that and it, it's crazy to think that people still don't understand what's going on meaning that with politics politics is basically in my opinion a scapegoat for the companies because they're able whenever something happens that the companies do like financial breakdown financial meltdown right that we had back in 08 uh, about 10 years ago that meltdown that we had that was blamed on government right that was blamed on government well government needs to regulate more government deregulated and you know it was just the government it, people blamed the companies of course but no one got arrested only one person got arrested from all of that fiasco people bailed out with much money and it's an ugly game white collar crime super duper pace white collar crime is the shit in the united states but yet, the I believe anyway, the way the companies do it is that the government is like the scapegoat for whatever decisions they want. But they pay the government. They pay those officials. They provide them with careers. And everybody that follows the government and how it works in the United States, that's how it is. These people that are career politicians, that have jobs waiting for at a lobbying firm. And that's how the cycle goes. They're trying to take care of their families. And I don't blame them. But if you're not able to see the bigger picture what I just explained to you about how politics works here. I'm not saying it isn't important. I'm not saying that we don't need to monitor it and make sure it doesn't get out of whack, right? But there's enough checks and balances in place that it won't happen. There won't be a full-out tyranny. There's just too much gridlock in the system. That's the way it's built. And I, I don't know if, if you understand how, how it works, then you would know that the president only has a third of the power in this country. He's got to go ahead and, and finagle with the Senate and with Congress and make sure that everybody's on the same page. And then even then you have the judicial branch with the judges that have to say is constitutional or not constitutional. So it's like 
a myriad of things that are in place for something to be passed or done and it always levels back and forth but you see all that shit i was explaining to you giving you a little basic history lesson from my point of view at the end none of this shit matters you know you can just tune in and tune out and trust me you could tune out for a few days and come back and realize like man i didn't miss any of this shit and that's how i felt and i will tell you to all of you that are totally succumbed to the news outlets and everything that's going on out there just take a few days break just don't do nothing nothing with news nothing with nothing like that just go ahead and check out for a few days just lift life put that phone down and you see how good life is man and you realize man i didn't need any of that shit i was just driving myself up the wall for no reason i'm telling you <laughs>